Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather. On this 24th day of September, Sunday, 2017, I'm Dave Percy. Up uh, first, uh, satellite imagery here showing a low pressure area there along the southwest coast. A band of clouds drifting in with some showers into Bristol Bay and then some clearing right behind that, followed by a lot more in the way of cloudiness here, spreading westward on the north side of that system, covering much of southern Alaska. There are a few breaks, uh, not a bad day down there along Kodiak Island, south of the Alaska Peninsula, and also up here in the interior, north slope, uh, pretty good. Uh, Brooks Range down across the Kobuk Valley, across the Seward Peninsula, into Kotzebue Sound, a uh, very nice afternoon. And then the Gulf of Alaska, seen some uh, clouds lingering, but a break to the south there that's spreading off to the northeast. And uh, another band of moisture heading eastward, uh, exiting the southeast coast. This uh, area slipping northeastward, just uh, giving a few, just grazing, uh, mainly the Dixon entrance area there, some moisture, and then off to the northeast a little bit. Otherwise, not a bad afternoon here. Uh, some sun breaks, maybe some isolated showers over the northern southeast coast. On over to about Yakutat and really not much immediately upstream here, just uh, mostly cloudy skies, a few isolated showers offshore. Meanwhile, up along the uh, Arctic coast, you can see a area of cloudiness dropping southeastward and then taking a turn more to the east there as it gets to the south. So that's just uh, grazing the central coast with a few a uh, little bit of light snow shower conditions on off to the east there. And the Bering Sea or the Chukchi Sea, mostly cloudy skies and that flow here on the chart, 996 millibar low, roughly south southwest of Togiak Bay and northerly breezes from the Chukchi Sea through the Bering Strait, picking up a little bit here down toward the Pribilofs as that trough swings through with uh, Light rain, fog, and drizzle, mostly cloudy skies, but nothing heavy. A little bit breezier, and then the wind's becoming more west-northwesterly on the south side of that system, with the uh, showers scattering out and really isolated with some clearing periods here west along the Aleutian Chain, all the way out to uh, Shimianat too. High pressure farther to the south now, kind of retreating out there, the center anyway, but still pretty much dominating the western area there. And again, the clearing up here over the north central interior, all the way back to the Seward Peninsula and northwest coast. And then this trough, again, earlier today, uh, showers and rain tapering off with the breaks coming in this afternoon. And again, this system here looks like it will be uh, mostly pushing off to the east northeast, south of the area, but close enough to nudge a little bit of uh, light rain or showers into the southern southeast coast from Dixon entrance up across. Uh, Craig Cloak, uh, Prince Wales Island, eastward, Annette, Ketchikan, uh, Metlakatla, those areas, on over to Hyder uh, and Hyderberg. We'll see the best chance of some light rain or showers tonight, while the northern areas, north of that area, uh, mostly cloudy, becoming maybe partly cloudy up around the Haines and Juneau area, with uh, mostly cloudy skies but dry for the North Gulf Coast throughout the night tonight. A few isolated showers in Prince William Sound. Basically dry now across south central Alaska, isolated showers maybe over the Alaska range and uh, partly cloudy becoming mostly cloudy Kodiak, just a risk of a shower southwest side of the island. This low uh, pretty much stationary there, weakening though to 1,002 millibars here um, south of south southwest of Togiak Bay and that area of moisture now sliding southward from where it was earlier today down in toward the eastern Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula, otherwise a trough right through the central interior promises uh, to bring areas of light rain or showers uh, a little more frequent here toward the border but uh, becoming less and less off to the west and then areas of light snow uh, possible fog here 
anywhere across the central and eastern Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast, westward to about Wainwright, where from Point Lay on out, pretty good there with northeast winds and uh, just partly cloudy skies, Seward Peninsula as well, into the northern Bering Sea, and then out to the west, we've got uh, really just uh, high pressure still dominating the pattern out there. A little bit of moisture sneaking over the top there with uh, one batch here bringing some light rain, fog, and drizzle. Lower flying conditions into the western Aleutians later tonight. And another one that will probably be following much the same path with high pressure kind of reestablishing itself up here over the Russian Far East and the Northwest Bering Sea. But uh, the gradient now shifting inland and not much to it at that with the northeast breezes maybe 10 to 20 miles an hour uh, here from the northwest interior but uh, resulting in a pretty sunny day, partly sunny anyway, here for uh, the Kotzebue Sound area, Kivalina back into the Kobuk Valley. Uh, mostly cloudy, maybe some flurries on the North Slope and the Arctic coast, so the best chance there around the Central Coast or off to the east. And then to the south, more clouds. Uh, looks like it's going to work into the Tanana Valley. Chance of showers here along the trough, mostly for the Alaska Range on down into the Copper River Basin. Become a little more widespread here along the North Gulf Coast early. And then this uh, pattern may diminish, tend to uh, fade away in the afternoon, but won't end completely. Still a chance of showers, mostly cloudy for the panhandle as that trough moves in. And then uh, showery conditions back to the southwest coast. And again into Bristol Bay, that low now finally just uh, gradually drifting off to the southeast across the Alaska Peninsula. And then a weak trough with some shower conditions with uh, breezes at about 15 miles an hour here across the central Aleutians. That's about it as uh, high pressure, as I mentioned, looks like it's making something of a comeback out to the west. And uh, again, that holds pretty well into Tuesday, which will keep uh, this next system initially sliding off to the northeast. And so no storm that's inside at all out there to the west. Not much of a change in the pattern here to the east. Uh, Bristol Bay, this system coming up and sliding up toward Kodiak Island. Uh, looks like maybe some gale force winds ahead of that front in a narrow band that'll eventually also be pushing across the offshore areas of the Gulf of Alaska in those marine zones. A trough uh, swinging into the southeast coast uh, with rain Monday night into Tuesday, changing to showers and becoming more showery, tending to taper off late in the afternoon. And looks like it'll be mostly sunny, Copper River Basin, South Central Alaska, all of the western interior looking really nice on Tuesday with a uh, chance of uh, showers here over the northeast interior. Arctic coast, couple of weak troughs, still that same pattern, mostly cloudy, maybe, uh, periods of flurries that won't really amount to much at all. And then for the uh, forecast lows, let's see for the uh, southeast coast for tonight, uh, there we go, for tonight, uh, lows looks like um, 55 to 60 for the lows, not too bad here, into the mid 50s to the north, otherwise 50s up along the Arctic coast, north slope, uh, lows anywhere from the upper 20s, on out to the mid-30s there with uh, mid-40s to lower 50s here over the southwest interior into Bristol Bay, as well as the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. And then for the uh, highs tomorrow afternoon, not much change here, upper 20s to mid-30s, so not much of a diurnal change. 40s to lower 50s, southwest interior, 50 to 55 or so, maybe a little bit warmer in the Susitna Valley here for south central Alaska. And again, uh, about the same as we've seen, 40s to lower 50s out over the Aleutians. And also for the Bering Sea, southeast coast tomorrow, highs 55 to 60 down south, otherwise mid 50s up to the north there in uh, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay and lower 50s out along the North Gulf Coast with the forecast lows. Looks like uh, now for Tuesday morning, uh, a little bit colder up here to the north, uh, falling now into the upper teens, areas of the Brooks Range uh, to mid-20s over the north slope areas there. So that kind of uh, indicating maybe a little bit of more of a clear sky pattern showing up there. While otherwise out along the Arctic coast, just slightly cooler now, maybe falling into the upper 20s to lower 30s with uh, 30s back in toward uh, the Norton Sound area. Could be below freezing, maybe into the upper 20s across the uh, Seward Peninsula area inland, but uh, out to the west near 40 for St. Lawrence Island. 40 for the Pribilofs, lower 40s there at Nunavak Island. At Macoriuk, uh, 42 in the forecast, mid 40s there for Kodiak Island, and lower to mid 40s across the Alaska Peninsula with the southeast uh, coast. Um, well, moving on to the high temperatures for Monday afternoon, 
55 to 60 again, not much change there, holding pretty steady. And then mid 50s, mostly North Gulf Coast, Northern Panhandle, back across South Central Alaska into the mid 50s, upper 20s to lower 30s there for the Brooks Range, mid 30s, mid to upper out over the Arctic coast. And along the southwest coast here, 40s to lower 50s, uh, maybe mid 50s there, northeast Bristol Bay, Igigik into King Salmon, and out over the Aleutians, uh, looking not too bad there, uh, 50 out towards Shimia, otherwise not much change elsewhere. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into aviation, uh, backing up here. Tomorrow morning, a little bit IFR up here over the Alaska Range. Otherwise, starting out pretty good over the interior. Uh, Got to get out to the tour of the Pribilofs and get some marginal and uh, IFR type weather on down to the Alaska Peninsula. And then it's kind of hit and miss on out to the west until you get out southwest and it increases a little bit. Southeast coast looking pretty good tomorrow. A little bit of uh, marginal stuff lingering down there over towards Stewart and Hyder. Otherwise, uh, again, along the mountainous areas of southern Alaska, areas of marginal VFR, and then a swath here from Cusacombe Bay northeast becomes IFR over the eastern interior, as well as along the north side of the Burks Range, but marginal back to the west. And then a pretty good area of VFR tomorrow afternoon here from the Yukon Delta up across Kotzebue Sound, eastward into the Koyukuk Valley. And for Tuesday morning, marginal, to, marginal VFR, areas of IFR here in that zone, but uh, on down toward the Western Alaska Range, and then conditions deteriorating here over the southern southeast coast, marginal to IFR conditions, pretty good out to the west here, with increasing marginal VFR over the southeast Bering Sea, now extending down over the Alaska Peninsula, and on back to the west over the Aleutians, while for Tuesday afternoon, not too bad over the interior, just a little bit here over the east side and the central Arctic coast. More extensive marginal VFR, Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, of course the Aleutians and up to the Bering Sea, eastward to the Pribilofs, and increasing IFR here over the southern southeast coast. So passes tomorrow, Anatubic and Adigan, marginal VFR for the uh, Lake Clark and Merrill passes IFR and rainy, marginal, windy, marginal, and Isabel, marginal VFR. Same forecast for Mentasta, but Tanita going VFR, and Portage, marginal VFR, Chilkoot and White, VFR, with the freezing levels at about 2,000 feet here, again, along the Brooks Range or just to the south, and then that same pattern, about the same out here over the northern Bering Sea, and then we've got a 4,000 foot zone here from the southeast interior across the Gulf on down to the southeast, and then gradually rising up to about 8,000 feet there over the southern panhandle. And uh, of course, the winds aloft will be following that gradient uh, tomorrow aloft, as we'll see on the upper air charts here in a little bit. Otherwise, uh, for tomorrow, icing wise, uh, light to very isolated, uh, moderate rime icing possible above about 6,000 feet over the southern southeast coast, and then another area up here of possible icing of mostly the light variety from over the uh, eastern interior southwestward, and then Bristol Bay and the north side of the eastern Aleutians, as well as up here over the central north slope to about the central Brooks Range. And jet stream now for tomorrow, uh, wind flow at 33,000 feet. Westerly is at about 50 knots up there in the Arctic coast. Uh, branch splits here wrapping around the upper low west of Nunavak Island, northwest at about 70 across the western Aleutians, and then the strong jet across the Pacific takes a turn to the north here, but uh, falls short of even the Gulf of Alaska and those westerlies at 100 knots, cutting in mostly across uh, the Queen Charlotte Islands and maybe Dixon Entrance. 9,000 feet, we've got uh, generally ridging here, western Canada and the southeast coast into the southeast interior. Light winds in those zones with uh, not even, not too bad here over the Gulf of Alaska, uh, 10 to 15, but picking up to 25 knots here, Kodiak Island across the Aleutian Range, northerlies 25 to 30, uh, well actually from the northwest interior across the uh, Bering Strait zone, St. Lawrence Island, but diminishing on down toward the Aleutians and then really lightening up out west under high pressure. And not much different here at 3,000 feet, uh, high pressure, uh, 10 to 15 knot winds there, but these northeast turning north, again, 20 to 30 knots, and then falling back to about 20 to 25 here, eastern and central Aleutians, light winds over Bristol Bay, 
and uh, 5 to 15 or 5 to 10, again, mostly through the interior, kind of a, a stronger zone here across the uh, central Alaska range. It may be up to 20 knots. Otherwise, light for the Gulf of Alaska from the southeast, light and variable across the southeast coast. And as far as turbulence goes, uh, light to isolated moderate chop, northern Bristol Bay, also here along the southwest coast, uh, down to the Perbolofs, northward across St. Lawrence Island and the uh, Seward Peninsula area into northwest Alaska, Kivalina Point Hope, on back toward the central Arctic coast. And uh, after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined again by Eric Stevens uh, from the GINA, or Geographic Information Network of Alaska at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thanks for joining us again, Eric. Glad to be here. Thanks. Uh, we are talking about satellites today and uh, what, what are satellites? And the easy way to talk about that would be to uh, introduce our friend the globe here, which is a round uh, spheroid type shape. We haven't been on a flat earth uh, as far as uh, history is known for uh, several hundred years now. And because of that, we, we also know that we are orbiting around other objects in space and that objects are orbiting mm -hmm. around the earth as well. We call all those things satellites in some form or fashion, right Eric? Right, well this leads to the discussion of Johannes Kepler's oh, yeah. research 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, did some of the early work and founded the three laws of planetary motion, which okay. are important to planets mm -hmm. and also to weather satellites. Okay. Kepler's first law talks about how uh, the orbit of an object around another object is mm -hmm. uh, an ellipse, not necessarily a circle. It's kind of a flattened circle? Yeah, okay. depending on how flat it could little. be. Okay. Uh, for our purposes, we'll just say they're mostly circular. Okay. The second law is most important for us, though, yeah. and that is the closer an object is to the thing it's orbiting, mm -hmm. the faster it goes. So in the solar system, the planet Mercury is mm -hmm. the closest planet to the sun. It orbits the sun in 88 days. It moves at 100,000 kilometers an hour. It's it a lot is different just than Earth. moving. Okay. Right. And um, further out from the Earth is Jupiter, mm -hmm. and it moves at only one quarter the speed of Mercury, and it has to uh, go further. So it takes 12 of our years for Jupiter to make one lap. Hmm. Okay. The further out you are, the slower you go. Okay. So we're talking about planets. Why? What does it have to do with weather satellites? Turns out, Kepler's laws apply to planets orbiting the sun. They also apply to satellites orbiting the Earth. Okay. You know, our natural satellite is the moon. There's right. the famous Apollo 8 Earthrise shot. Beautiful shot. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you could just talk about that forever. <laughs> uh, December 1968, uh -huh. the moon is about a quarter of a million miles away from the Earth. Okay. It takes a month to go around mm -hmm. the Earth. It's that far out, it takes a full month to do an orbit. Another shot here of the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. Instead of being 250,000 miles out, the ISS is only 250 miles up. It's really close. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't take a full month for the space station to go around the Earth. It only takes right. 90 minutes. Uh -huh. It's so close, it just whips right around 90 minutes. Okay. So weather satellites, there are a number of weather satellites and there are a number of orbits. The further out you have the satellite, the mm -hmm. longer it takes to go around the Earth. And this is important because different satellites have different purposes. So we have a satellite here. This little okay. salt shaker lid will serve as our satellite going around the Earth. Let's say you have a satellite that's 22,000 miles above the Earth. Uh -huh. This is kind of a magical spot because at that distance, it takes a full day for the satellite to go around the Earth. Oh, Imagine okay. if you put your satellite 22,000 miles up from the equator uh -huh. and had it go with the Earth as the Earth spun. At the same speed. Right. Okay. The satellite goes around the Earth just as fast as the Earth itself is turning in effect. The satellite will hover in one spot, oh, I see. and it, it appears when you make a movie loop of picture after mm -hmm. picture after picture, you can replay that and you get these movie loops. Geostationary satellites, these okay. are called, because uh -huh. they're stationary in appearance, and uh, they provide a constant frame of reference. We've got an example here. Another nice thing about these satellites, since they're that far out mm -hmm. at 22,000 miles, you can see from pole to pole, which is nice. So they're, they're pretty broad view and a constant frame of reference. So th those are the pictures, that if you're watching a weather satellite loop on TV, your favorite mm -hmm. weather show, that's the picture that you're going to see is you one that's bet. sitting over the same spot. If you're seeing a, a movie loop play uh -huh. again and again, that came from geostationary satellites. Okay. That's the only way you can do that. Yeah. The bummer, though, for us in Alaska is yeah. we're up on the very top of the planet, and mm -hmm. for, for geostationary satellites to work, they have to be over the equator. So for the geostationary bird to view Alaska, it's kind of like reading a book, but you're reading it at John oh, like that. Right. So there's another kind of orbit called the polar orbit, okay. which is nice. We're near the pole. Yeah. 
and here's a satellite, those polar orbiters are much closer to the Earth, mm -hmm. getting down toward International Space Station elevation, and they're not in the equatorial plane, rather their orbital plane is inclined okay. like this, and the Earth turns under that satellite as the satellite orbits. Hmm. The nice thing about that is for Alaska, the satellite will go right over Alaska a few times a day, and so you get a much closer image. We've got a, a shot from the uh, SUMI NPP satellite, uh -huh. Uh, specifically, it's a true color image from the VIRS sensor. That's an acronym there. Okay. But it's a beautiful shot of Alaska, and you can see so much detail. The kind of detail because you're close in. Very high resolution. You couldn't yeah. get this kind of view from geostationary satellites. Okay. The, the advantage of these polar orbiters is nice close imagery. You can mm -hmm. see a lot of detail. The disadvantage, though, is that the satellite flies by, right. and then you have to wait a while to get the next image. And it, if geostationary weaknesses are that you're reading the page like that, mm -hmm. the polar orbiter, you're reading the page straight on, but it's, it's so close. <laughs> and then right. it zips by, okay. and you have to wait for the satellite to come around the Earth again. So there's no one perfect solution. Okay. Different satellites for different orbits. Uh, each has their strength. And amazingly, it all comes back to Johannes Kepler and his laws of planetary motion, the same laws that govern how the planets orbit the sun, they govern how the satellites orbit the Earth, and even our little pretend salt shaker right, right here. Right, okay. Well, since, uh, what, the 1957 Sputnik, we've been uh, putting man-made objects into uh, orbit around the Earth and starting to get pictures back. Who knows what mm -hmm. will happen in the next 50 to 100 years. Oh, Amazing it's, it's stuff. It's a growing science, and uh, the future is bright. Thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. And uh, for more information on GINA, and uh, what the satellite uh, systems do there and uh, what Eric's been talking about today, you can go to the web address on your screen. For Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Light southeast winds here along the southeast coast and even lighter on the north coast, five knots, but even with those light winds, Seas are still running at about seven feet across the entire area. Uh, Clarence Strait, northwest at 10. Southerly's at 10 knots there for Stevens Passage up through Northern Lynn Canal. And uh, looking ahead to uh, Tuesday, we've got south winds coming up to 20 knots, a little bit stronger. He sees eight feet, a little bit higher. And easterly's 20 to 25 here on the north coast, so some small craft advisories there as well. Southeast 20 for Clarence Strait and Stevens Passage northeast at 10, north 15 there for Lynn Canal. And for Prince William Sound, we've got south winds at 10 knots for the north Gulf Coast. Prince William Sound southeast at 10, light winds, slight seas there, as well as northern Cook Inlet turning south at 15 uh, here in the southern areas, southeast 15, Kachemak Bay. And for the Barren Islands, uh, not too bad, pretty good actually, southeast at 15 with seas at just 4 feet. And then for the uh, Tuesday outlook, uh, increase in the winds, next system coming up, uh, front pushing northward, coming up to small crafts in the afternoon here for the North Gulf Coast. Gales by late afternoon for the western North Gulf Coast, 35 knots down across the Barren Islands. Northeasterly is increasing to 25 for Kachemak Bay and southern Cook Inlet. And for Bristol Bay, east at 20 tomorrow. West-southwest winds for the Alaska Peninsula, 15 knots, 3 to 6 foot seas. And then we've got easterly winds here, east side of Kodiak, across the south, and then Shelikoff Strait, mostly south at 15. For the uh, Tuesday outlook, uh, big increase in the winds coming in here, full gales across Kodiak Island, including Shelikoff Strait, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, uh, 35 knots out of the northeast, Castle Cape on west, northwest at 30, and then from Cape Sarachev here, and the north side of the peninsula, northeast at 15, up to 20 for Bristol Bay. And for the eastern Aleutians tomorrow, northwest, 20 knots across the Fox Islands there with uh, seven to four foot seas. And then north 15, kind of a lighter area here for the central Aleutians and back around to the northwest, 15 to 20 out west. And then uh, forecast for Tuesday, north 10 to 15, staying nice, high pressure dominating the western Aleutians and Bering Sea. 20 knots out of the north from Atka eastward all the way over to an Alaska Island. And for the southwest coast, uh, south of Nunavak Island, we've got easterly winds in the forecast out of uh, Kuskokwim Bay there with seas at about five feet. And then north uh, of there, north of Nunavak Island along the Yukon Delta coast, north at 20, 
six-foot seas, and St. Lawrence Island small craft advisories, eight-foot seas, and winds at 25 knots out of the north, a little bit lighter down towards St. Lawrence Island, but still northerlies from there on down across the Pribilof Islands, 20 knots with seas at about six feet. <clears throat> And then not much change in the Tuesday forecast for those areas there. Still north at 20, seas 5 feet uh, or so, and the southwest coast here. About the same forecast, winds all northerly at 20 knots and 4 to 5 foot seas. So uh, any small craft advisories will be non-existent on Tuesday and northeast at 15 there. Uh, pretty light for St. Lawrence Island, but uh, a little brisker there in Norton Sound where we've got northeasterlies at 20 knots and seas there through the sound running roughly at about four feet. And then up along uh, north for the Arctic coast, or we'll start from uh, Wales in that zone up to Cape Thompson, small craft advisories, north 25 knots, six foot seas, then falling back to 15 knots there, and then becoming northwest from Cape Beaufort on the western coast at 15, up to 20 for the central coast, back down to 15 north northwest here for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast and three to four foot seas. Outlook for Tuesday there, picking it up a little bit here, especially in the far eastern areas toward uh, demarcation point. Seas building at eight feet as winds come up to 25 knots. We've got 20 knot easterlies falling back to 15 on the uh, central coast and even lighter on the west side now down to 10 knots and kind of a variable wind 10 to 15 knot pattern here uh, across Chichuk CC. And for tonight, again, areas of light snow up here along the central and eastern Arctic coast of the Berks Range. A band of uh, moisture here through the central interior, really tapering off out to the west. This uh, area sliding south to the eastern Aleutians, exiting the Perbolofs. Not too bad elsewhere, uh, mostly cloudy or partly cloudy. Best chance of moisture down over the southern panhandle. Showers continue to diminish across south central Alaska. And tomorrow, uh, maybe picking it up a little bit, mostly cloudy. Areas of showers, especially in the north Gulf Coast, in across the panhandle, but nothing really heavy, tapering off in the interior. And then moving to the... These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.